I will talk about OpenShift plus Fedora plus Virtual Kubelet plus Raspberry Pi and Podman. And I will ask, like, if people know, are familiar with their components, we'll just skip it and we'll go pass through. And I really hope a demo will work, like, next time when doing demos with the internet, better request a room with the windows where you can teach some internet. Cool. So agenda, short introduction, explain pre-start hooks, explain what the components means in this in the context of this talk, some demo and questions. So I am I'm MJ, you can try to pronounce my name, but good luck. I think Czech people might be more lucky in this in this area. I've worked for Edgar for three years, mainly cloud managed services, Azure, whatever. So how all this started, so there was this event, Red Hat Tech Exchange, and there was field, EMEA Field Hackathon, and one of their colleagues came and said like, hey, I have this top secret customer, they want to hook a bunch of ARM workloads to the Kubernetes cluster to run basically unit tests on ARM hardware. And can we do it? Like, yeah, we have a hackathon, five hours, few beers, and we managed to make it running in the most hackiest way with a free lines of code with a virtual kubelet project. And we won. After that, conclusion was I need to formalize it a little bit better because winning something with free lines of code, it's fine, but I didn't feel right. And I always wanted to have like side project, the screen showing something at home on the wall and I want to schedule it from Cube Cluster because I have one. So I ended up with this. So who knows what is virtual kubelet? Cool, okay. So if to simplify, virtual kubelet is a, it's a framework which helps you to masquerade the kubelet itself. So it presents itself, the code base basically, allows to present itself to the Kubernetes cluster as a node and what happens under the hood, it's up to you. You can do basically whatever you want. So as it's shown here, it has basic functionalities of the kubelet, but at the same time, it does not have all the constraints which normal kubelet will have. So you don't need like networking, you don't need resource constraints. It can be basically anything what can run Golang binary, from your mobile phone to like Raspberry Pi or any other edge device. Okay, going further. So main things what Kubelet, Virtual Kubelet can do, but the framework basically hands you over is you can create delete pods, get some status, get some logs if you have implementations, like capacity, so all the bare minimum what you would get from the normal Kubelet. And you can bring your own network, you can hook up to existing networks, all those things, cool. And this is how the interface looks of the virtual kubelet. So anybody who codes, that would be straightforward. So as long as you can implement those methods on your edge device or your, any hardware, basically the, as soon as you create pod on Kubernetes cluster, create pod method will be called on virtual kubelet framework and you can basically blink lights on the pod creation, any of, any of those things. Okay, anybody doesn't know what this guy is? Yeah, okay, that's Raspberry Pi, the generation free. Just, I don't use Raspberry Pi 4, just because Fedora ARM does not yet support basically Raspberry 4, but I hope that will come. Okay, Podman, after I think few days, we don't need to introduce this guy too. Like we had so many talks about that. So I try to use Docker, that basically oomed my devices all the time. Like I was not able to do anything. You run a container, it's just like, Boom. I tried to use Cryo, there was some package mis basically conflicts. I just like looked through our internal mailing list and one, one guy asking like, hey, I'm using, I want to run containers on my Raspberry Pi and basically random Dan email appeared. And it's like, hey, did you try to use Podman? Like DNF install worked out of the box, next. And I use Warlink Podman API for communication for now I would really be happy to get rid of it. So Fedora ARM, again, it's just a basically Fedora version for ARM compiled. 
where like Raspberry Pi and Fedora is not the best friends. DB, Debian is better, but I'm a fanboy of Fedora. And I know all the commands, I know how it, everything works. So if something doesn't work, I know where to look. So fan with this. And as a Kubernetes distribution, I use OpenShift because basically that's my bread and butter each and every day. I can have clusters running, I can spin it up for my personal work uses, it's just easy. Okay, so now the fun part starts. So if you go looking to Virtual Kubelet, Virtual Kubelet can work into two modes. Pool, basically where you're running your Virtual Kubelet itself on an edge device somewhere in China, whatever, and it just goes to your cluster with enough credentials and pulls data saying like, hey, I'm this node one, give me something, give me workload. This is very good when you, your workloads are distributed and we don't have, you don't have any service discovery, you don't know where we are, we just come up with random IP addresses, random network connections, and just get some stuff. Another one is push, which is most of the providers are using, where you're running a virtual kubelet as a pod on the cluster itself, and it goes to edge devices via SSH, API, any other protocols. In this case, you have to know where to go. So some kind of service discovery or hard-coded networking or something like that. Okay, so what I did, I used the mode one basically. So I'm running everything on my Raspberry Pi just because when I connect it at home to my Wi-Fi each and every time it gets new IP address and I just didn't bother to implement any service discovery or all those things. So this guy here, if it's still running, yes. It's running virtual kubelet binary, it's like 37 megs. It's running Podman and Varling as a runtime, container runtime, and it hooks up to my OpenShift cluster in Yeast US, basically somewhere close to, I don't know, in Azure data center. And I have basically screen connected just to show stuff. Cool, so with no more waiting, let's see what we can do. So, here I have, I'm in the Raspberry Pi itself. So let's show, so that's Fedora 30. Again, 31 doesn't work on this one. And I have Podman installed, so let's watch for containers and see that nothing is running here. And this is my OpenShift cluster. So if I do OC get nodes, I see that there is default nodes connected to that. And last one is name of this Raspberry Pi. It has a kube config, so each and every time I plug it to the power, it just comes up, use the kube config, registers to the cluster, and comes up with a, as a node, as an agent. And everything here, like version, roles, everything is it's just simply at the moment hard coded in the back end and you can do whatever you want. So I have this container one, which is boozy box. It does not do much. It just basically sleeps for 30 seconds. So let's try to do that. So pod example. So now it goes to East US data center, basically schedule the pod, pod pokes the cluster, Raspberry Pi keeps poking the cluster, finds the work pending pod for him to be running, and just schedules as normal kubelet. And we see it's basically sleep 30 seconds for some time. So I still have to talk about for seven seconds until it dies, and let's hope it just kills too. So, Went, should went away, whoop. And we can see that basically exit code zero because the pod just died gradually and that got updated in the, our cube cluster. So bare minimum functionality. So I have a different pod which is more fun. So I have implemented minimum functionality where you can mount a host path and expose some stuff. So I have a Chromium browser built for ARM I build it as a container in the same, basically, Raspberry Pi. I'm mounting some volume dirs just for hacking purposes, and I'm hooking to accession of the logged in user, which is here, so I could show something. And I'm passing, basically, parameters with what I want to open. So 
create hf for examples browser and i really hope that that stuff shows up here now it takes a while whoop whoop and we have a dashboard so we can put anything here basically you can do any fancy stuff anything for those who don't see it's like just just popped up there so if I now delete that stuff, it should go down, I hope. See, see delete, for the dash all. And it just went away. So in theory, if you run this virtual kubelet on your node itself as a binary, you hook up via SSH API or any other API. And if somebody would be doing like Chorus Fedora, which edge nodes could update themselves, you could have ecosystem where the node just needs some credentials from some authority and could do basically anything what your clusters can do. Cool. So what's next for this hacky project? I think one more weekend is needed. I have zero tests. That was hacking and most of the time I spent basically trying to find out how the APIs works of the wireling. Uh, some edge cases, which took me a while to debug. Move to Podman API v2, which will be like Docker compatible API, which enables better ecosystem, more libraries to do, and I think easier. Reuse code from Podman kubeplay and Podman kube generate, because now I have my own small converters. And because that code's already implemented, I just want to bring it in, and that will enable so many features. Remote Podman management, so I want to run that stuff on my cluster and just hook the API to the nodes itself. So I don't need to basically SCP my binary, virtual kube binary each and every time I do something. Secrets, config maps, volumes already supported, so we could do those binary st minor stuff. Edge stage logs, give an example, just because in example I have three point like smaller 3.5 inch screen, that guy doesn't work with Fedora, it needs driver porting, and what I did it once, next upgrade basically broke it, and it's just ecosystem. And better bootstrapping for the node, so you can just bake the card on your laptop, hook it in, and you're done. Cool, so that's basically it. So this is where you can find me, if you have any questions, you want to try it, you want to play it, the repository is under virtual kubelet organization slash podman. It has bare minimum, like readme files and all the code. So you can try it, you can pull it, check it out. And yeah. Yeah. How much CPU and how much memory is the kubelet? I don't know at this point in time. So what's happening here is, so it's, honestly, wouldn't say the spec, because it's a bare minimum. I think it takes more when you start running from it's something, like, orchestra project. It's like, again, would not be able to say, like, metrics or something like that. It depends on the implementation, how your code will do that, because that's everything on your control. So I used to run this dashboard at home, and I just basically dropped the cluster off for two days, three days. And as long as the Podman running, it runs. You can, re -implement, you can implement the virtual kubelet code itself to cache some of the data and just spin it up from the cache until it's lost the connectivity. And as long as it has the data, it just can do that. So currently what I'm doing, then, Kubernetes asks for like status, like what's the stuff? It has to return the data. So it just hash all the Podman spec, like Kubernetes spec, and I put it to the, to the tax annotations, to the Podman pod, and when it reads, it basically re marshals it, enters the data, and that's all. So it's, a, it's very, very specific on the implementation itself, I would say. You just go. Cool. Any other questions?
Kubelet is too heavy. It has some dependencies on like networking or like story stuff. You have, it's, it's just way, way heavier and more complex for the use case like that. And I needed, I wanted to try this basically as a, I said, pet project. It just, all the bits and pieces fell in the one place in one bucket and it's just like, okay, let's do it. I installed it, it didn't work. I swapped the card to Fedora 30 and continued for my weekend. And there is basically a note in the Fedora ARM page saying like we don't support it until minimum hardware will be supported like VGIs and up, like out sound output and all this stuff. I said, there is mailing list I think internally flying about that, but again, as my first flight implied, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yet. I just needed to like complete it, done it, show it, and that's done. In the beginning, you said uh, you will do something differently after this. Uh... Yeah. So now it's basically after Scott's talk, I saw that there is a lot of code base I can reuse, so I would do that. I would start from the basically running virtual kubelet on the like on the Kubernetes cluster itself, not on the edge device. Basically making a push model and potentially have some shim layer for the like discovery. And the code itself is a mess. It's just like more you see, more you learn, it's like, no. Cool, if nothing else, okay, one more. No, not yet. That again, that learnings from these two days before that I should. It's, it's one of those things when you like, you Google Fedora ARM, you're getting Fedora for ARM, and you go for it. You don't Google Fedora IoT, like it's, I think we need to change or buy some ads in certain pages <laughs> to point people to the right directions. Thanks, everybody.